Welcome back. Um, so now we're going to look at labor <coughs> and expand on it a little bit. So in previous lessons, uh, we looked at labor, the L, big L, as being only for pay. Now we're going to relax that a little bit because choices are more complex than that. Because you may not be working for pay, but it's also time you may not be considering as your leisure time. So for example, doing uh, cleaning the house, um, doing yard work, raising children. This is not considered by most people to be leisure time. So <clears throat> much of the time at home that you spend at home is not necessarily leisure time. It's more towards doing things around the house, household production. And so we're gonna be expanding on that a little bit. So if we look at the table here, we can see kind of the breakdown of tasks that people do by um, with children, with the older children, and um, without children. And so if we look at this table here, um, a couple of things will stand out. First, um, women tend to spend more time, or spend less time rather, with paid work and more with household production with young kids than with older. And so if you look at the household production, you will see that the time in the household working um, tends to go down. Um, this is for uh, men and women. Um, for women and men, both of them, you see that it does go down that household production time for both men and women, um, although it's larger for women than it is for men, that effect. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the revisit the labor supply curve um, and that decision to work based off of budget constraints and preferences um, where you have previously we looked at income and um, leisure we're just going to replace in household production time here okay. so this will um, be working not for pay um, but also leisure. So it's not just going to be leisure. It's going to be leisure and household production. So anytime you're not working for pay. So we're just going to expand on that. So in this example, we have uh, $20 of non-labor income. And then you can see, just if you do the math here, for each hour, if you have 16 hours in the day, um, we go from 20 to 160. Um, so it goes up by, sorry, 20 to 180. So it goes up by 160. And so um, the hourly wage, if you did the calculations here, would be $10 an hour. And based on our previous discussions, you would see that this worker would choose uh, yeah, this point here. And that is where that worker would maximize his or her utility. And so if we look here at the um, labor force participation rate of women, both married and single, um, you can see that, for single women at least, there is a very drastic increase in the labor force participation rate in addition to the percent of the women working full time. And the reason why is the child gets older, they may require a little less care, and so child care options become more viable at that point. With married women, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. And the reason why is um, you have that second income coming in, which we will talk about a little bit, um, and that, that allows these decisions to be a little bit different um, in that process. So far, we have looked at labor supply and the decision to work um, as a single decision maker. So you as an individual, how much you know, do you need to make to maximize your utility? How much should you um, work? But in reality, for those who are married and with children, the decisions are joint decisions. And so when you're married, it's not my money and my spouse's money, it's our money. At least it should be. And so what happens there is that you don't need to consider one spouse's income and another spouse's income, you need to consider that household's income. And so with that, you need to make some joint decisions. And so the model we're gonna be looking at um, looks at couples as though they um, work together and make decisions based off of what 
they're comparatively better at. And so this is where specialization comes in. And so partners tend to find it beneficial to specialize in the work that needs to get done. Um, if the decision is to work or not to work, they must ask who is more productive at the, in the workplace, who is more productive at home. So if the wage of a woman is lower or the wage of the male is lower, whoever's lower for, then comparatively speaking, they will be more productive at home. So if we look a step further than that, now, nowadays it's more likely that both spouses are working. Okay, so the decision is they both work full time. Well, what if they need um, additional cash? So they have a child, they need the money. How do they decide who should go out and work those extra hours and who should be at home with the child? Well, that's an instance where it comes back to who can make more money by working that second job. And in a lot of cases there, that's how the decision will be made. Oh, it's not the only part of it. Um, some spouses are more capable of working a second job than others. Um, and so that decision, though, has to be made jointly. And it comes down to the idea of specialization. So it's possible and likely that both will work for pay. And there are long-term costs associated with home production because of the um, less take-home wages. And so this is not the right slide for that, but um, so when you work from home, you're giving up those wages. So we talked about the opportunity cost of leisure. All right, this is talking about the opportunity cost of non uh, non for pay labor. Okay. So if an extra hour of market work by either um, the parent creating the ability to buy more than necessary to compensate for lost time at home, then it's beneficial to work. So basically, if there's a greater benefit of working, then there is a cost of staying home, then it becomes more um, beneficial again for that worker to go into work. For that parent to go to work. So this looks at the idea of um, just kind of what we we're talking at here. And so if let's say we are at point A here, okay, and we decide to decrease our household production from H0 up to H1. And so we're up at point D here. And so what happens is that um, here household production is going down. It's going from age zero to age one. So you're spending less time at home. Right? But you're in, um, the trade-off of that is that you're getting more money. So are you better or worse off? Well, let's see. The utility, if you are on your budget constraint at point A, is U1. Up at point D, you're at U2. And so based on our um, decision or our discussions about um, indifference curves, budget constraints, and all that, um, it's basically the, the, the gain that you would get in your utility from making more money is greater than the loss you would take by having less time in the household. Um, and so this just kind of gives a broad overview of the decisions. Now, a couple properties. If it's a steeper budget constraint, okay, so if it's steeper, and let's just say it's something like, um, let's just say something like that. Sorry, it should be touching, but get the point. So you have a utility. Well, at this point, let's just say it was right here. So the steeper utility curve shows a preference towards um, leisure or household production in this case. And so when that's the case, you would work less and spend more time in the household. If it's flatter, there's going to be more of a preference for um, for income. And so you're going to work more. And so preferences which 
in large part are represented in the steepness of the indifference curves and the utility and the indifference curves for different levels of utility will play a big role in how much the workers will work versus spend time in household production.